Hey everybody, Brian Horvath here, and I just wanted to say I'm excited to share with you tonight about what I talked to you about yesterday, and that is I was going to share with you how my wife and I were able to pay off our home in less than a year without any standard income or monthly income to go, yeah, we can do that. And I just wanna share with you tonight um, about how we paid off that mortgage, which really fuels a lot of what I teach today at brianhorvath.com and why, why I've decided to go ahead and go forward with being a speaker, consultant, and coach, helping people to know, live, and love the purpose they have for their career in finances. Um, so let's get started. Truth, home, a home that you own is an asset. Yes, it's an asset. Truth, it can be a liability though when the asset has you. When the mortgage has you in chains and you're behind and you don't know how to keep up and you have everything, it seems like, in your financial uh, wallet going towards the home. When there's not a lot of things to do outside of the home. And so that is the truth as well. That yes, it's an asset, but it can be a liability in your life it can steal joy from your life if it's constantly keeping you from doing the things you're supposed to do or want to do, both individually or as a family or as a married couple, whatever it may be, single, doesn't matter. Um, truth, it doesn't have to be this way. And this is part of the story that I wanna share with you tonight. So a couple truths and a little bit of a story. Some, some seven years ago, my wife Becky and I were newly married and uh, newly paid off all of our consumer debt and, and whatnot. And there was something in us after playing a little bit. We went to Costa Rica for a vacation with cash and you know all that kind of stuff. And as we got home, we started feeling like, what, what, what would it be like? Wouldn't it be cool if we could pay off our home? And yeah, it's a nice idea, right? But it probably require a lot of sacrifice and all these other reasons why we shouldn't. And so we didn't. And then it kept coming back up, both individually, by ourselves, uh, but also together as a couple. And so we decided to do it. Again, we had been debt-free with everything except our mortgage, and we wanted to get rid of that too. And it was a nice home. It's a great town home. Two bedroom, two car, uh, or two, two bedroom, two bath, uh, three bedroom, two bath, two car garage, uh, front yard and a backyard in Pasco County. Just really nice, accessible to stuff. We really enjoyed it. Um, but we also knew we wanted to have a family. So there's a lot of reasons why we wanted to pay that sucker off. And so we finally came to the idea, it's like we wanna have a family, we're not getting any younger, uh, we got married a little later in life, and so what would it be great to have a child and, and to be debt-free uh, with starting a family? So we ac actually decided to do it and go forward with it. And um, I was on board with the plan. And like I said, both of us hemmed and hawed a little bit. So we decided let's put it into writing. Let's start getting it onto a sheet of paper that can start looking at what do we owe, uh, when do we want to pay it off, you know, your simple equation for setting goals, especially financial goals, because they're easier, easier to measure, uh, we decided to put together a sheet. And so I've made a copy of that sheet for you, just so you can see right here, right here, right here. I won't get into it right now, but I want you to see that that was the sheet. It's a replica, because the real one's in the Smithsonian. No, just kidding, it's a, it's a, it's a copy that I had saved. So we made this sheet and it said on the sheet, so I don't forget the dates. It said that we were gonna pay off the house and starting in March of 2013, we were gonna pay off the home and it would take us to, uh, aggressively, it would take us July 30th, 2015. Yeah, 2015. So starting in March, 2013, paid off in July, uh, 2015. That's what I had put together in my analytical plan. And wouldn't you know it, uh, I came home from work one day uh, or somewhere and I saw on the refrigerator was a big black Sharpie, if you could see that hopefully, a big black Sharpie just ripped through the paper. And let me show you again, the sheet. And you can see here, there's a big, a big Sharpie marker swoosh, whatever you want to call it, through the paper. And that paper did not say July 2015. It said March 2014. I just got done telling you. We decided to finally get started on this plan to pay off $99,600. That's what was left on our townhome mortgage. We just put together a plan. I have just put together a plan, felt like all Superman-like, to present to my wife. And we said, okay, 
Well, I come home and there's that big Sharpie marker that says not two years or two and a half years, but in one year, in one year, our $99,600 mortgage would be wiped clean. Uh, yeah. 12 months? I don't think so. I mean, we were already super stretching the two and a half year plan with $1,200 extra towards the mortgage. And here we are, she's thinking we should pay it off in a year. How is that mathematically going to happen? Well, fellas, ladies, kids, again, do not try this at home. This is like, this will flip your wig, especially if you're more analytical like me. Um, now I'm a dreamer. Um, I believe in prayer, but uh, I was like, how's this going to happen? I mean, are we going to eat? Uh, are we going to go anywhere? What is going to be, what's going to give here for us to actually do this? Hashtag no way I'm out. So I said, okay, sure. Like a good husband should, and probably with some smart remark or smirk, unfortunately. Um, but what I want to share with you tonight is how we started even thinking or how we even started getting on the idea that this could actually happen. Can I share that with you? Yes. Okay, great. So here's what we did. And I kind of call it, I got my little sticky note to not forget the four D's. I am in my four D's now, but this is no, this is the four D's. And the first one I want to share with you about how this could possibly happen for you is dedicate. That's the first D. Dead a cake. Now, what do I mean by that? Dedicate is basically what I'm saying. You need to think about whose it is. And for me and my wife, we don't believe any of the things that we have come from us. We have a faith that there's a God there that provides for us. Now, I'm not asking you to believe what we believe. I'm just asking you to consider that left in our hands, we may not be able to do as much as if we dedicate it to the man upstairs, to the God himself. Um, if you're not on that plan, no big deal. You can still work this, I believe, but I think this was a secret sauce for us. So maybe dedicate to your spouse or dedicate to your kid your kids or dedicate to an accountability partner that you're going to get after said plan. Now that I come to think about it, this plan could work for anything. You want to pay off your car? You want to save your first money in your emergency fund or, or, or for a vacation? It doesn't matter. For us, I'm talking about a big thing, a big asset in our life, one of the biggest purchases we can make, a home. And of course, it's not just the building, right? You don't just have a house, you make it a home, right? But in this case, the house, the mortgage. How do we get this out of our lives? We decided to dedicate it to God and go, God, this is your stuff. If we're going to do this in any shape of, uh, uh, of the imagination, we're going to need you because we're not going to want to do it. This is not necessarily fun to pay off all this money. So how are we going to do it? And especially when we looked at our paycheck, we're going, we don't make enough to do that mathematically on paper. So either I'm going to have to start a singing career because it probably ain't stand-up comedy. It probably isn't singing either. Or someone's going to have to do something miraculous and it ain't going to be us. So we believe that it could be God. Now check this out. That, that might be a stretch already. Number one, dedicate. The second one, to me, guys and gals, was even crazier. Donate. Let me tell you a little story about my wife. She has a gift of giving. She enjoys generosity. I'm a generous guy too, but I'm kind of like nerdy about it. I have to think about it for a while and put it on paper and see how it's going to mathematically equate. It sounds really smart, right? Not that smart, but I kind of like to see it on paper first, right? But for my wife, she's like, I think we should give away $10,000 because that's 10% of what we actually are asking God to pay off for us. So if you're, a, uh, if you're a person that goes to church and you believe in giving, you might give 10%. It's called a tithe, okay? In this case, again, not asking you to believe what I believe, but for us, what we did in our story of paying our home off, we decided to dedicate and then we donated. So we basically said, we believe that $100,000 somehow is going to come our way. And so we're going to give into that believing. Now, again, I want to be clear. This is not like a, I give and then I get, no, this is just something as an extra, like call us crazy kind of measure to go, we're, we're putting this out there because we believe in being generous. And I don't think anybody would argue that if you're generous, you win. 
And it may not be exactly what you want or how you want it, but I believe in being generous. Good things happen when you're generous. You ever been generous like that? Someone been generous like you, to you like that? Think about it. So the first two D's were dedicate, then donate. So we did, I'm like, wait a second, this doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't we just pay the 10,000 to off the 99,000? Why are we giving this away again? But again, kicked in the butt, said my wife's right, we should do it. So we did, quickly, before we just changed our mind. Um, the third D was develop. Um, and actually, I just thought of something. This can be kind of two different ways. The first part of develop would be to develop or devise uh, a plan that would mean major alterations to our uh, cash flow, major alterations to our giving, saving, spending on a monthly basis, major alterations to our lifestyle if we were going to do this. And so we did. We, we got down to the brass tacks and we cut out things. We didn't cut out everything, guys. I'm telling you right now, there were some things we're going, all right. We're not going to do all that. We're going to do this. Or maybe we'll do that this month, but not every month. So there were some uh, conversations. There was compromise, some intense kind of discussions. <laughs> but eventually we got to a, a place where we felt comfortable that we both um, uh, could do these things. Now, let me make a little disclaimer. This is before kids, so it was a little easier. But again, you can apply these same concepts to when you have kids. And matter of fact, depending on your kids' ages, you can bring them aboard and teach them these kinds of things that, of course, school does not teach for the most part. So we developed a plan. We start looking at how much money can we put towards the mortgage. Extra. Extra. And so we started becoming diligent with that. And on our chart, well, I'll get to that in a second. So then we decided to, uh, I also thought about develop it. What it also did is developed a plan, yes, but also developed our character. Man, you know, we learned we can live without certain things. We learned that we can work as a team. Uh, we learned we can work together on finances. And, and honestly, folks, uh, our first couple of years of marriage were very rough. Uh, but one of the things we did agree on was our finances, which made it easier, not easy, but easier. The fourth D is just do it, okay? I'll just write for simple to keep it within my Ds, do it. And do it by me is being diligent. Uh, the diligent, when we're diligent, we prosper, right? The tortoise wins the race every time, not the hare. You know, the hare runs, takes a nap, runs, takes a nap. Tortoise inches along. And for a while, that's what it seemed like. So, you know, what we did was we paid our monthly payments, but then we kept paying extra. I don't know if you can see this, guys, but we start paying a little bit extra every single week, every single month, and we start writing it down and charting it out. And that gave us hope that gave us a sense of progress and that helped us do all these other D's by staying in line with what we said we were going to do. So it's kind of like Nike, right? Just do it. Just do it. So monthly payments, extra payments to principal, uh, making sure we wrote, this is for principal. This is not for the entire loan. Uh, we said no to things that normally we would say yes to or could say yes to. Again, not everything. We didn't become like legalistic or shut it all down you know, uh, hunker down, you know, it wasn't like that. Um, but we did say, hey, what's more important, us paying off the debt or us going out to eat? Things like that, okay? Um, and then we were just diligent, 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 and we felt like little wins here, little wins there, little wins here, little wins there. Wouldn't you know it, as we continue to progress, like I showed you in this sheet, uh, my wife was able to receive some bonuses. Now I worked in a job, there's no opportunity for bonus or anything like that. Um, I had no problem with that. It was the kind of work I did. But uh, my wife called on a big company, a billion dollar company, and they happened to have one of their best years ever. You may have heard of them. They're called the K-Cup Company, Keurig. Well, they had one of their best years ever. And as we're chugging along and charting the course and chugging along and working the plan, all that kind of stuff, um, once you know it, a huge bonus came in towards the end of the year and that $99,000, that $99,600 was actually paid off in March of 2014. Right here, guys. Paid off in March 2014. The last payment we made was in, let's see here, it looks like, oh, I can't find it, but by March, actually we paid off the last 
account or the last bill while we were overlooking the Caribbean from Atlantis and the Bahamas and was all expense paid trip. Now, if you look up top, we wrote the Fiji Islands as being a reward for us paying off this home. But wouldn't you know it, we backed off that based on some other things that were going on in our lives and some, some victories we had and some, uh, just some more discussions. And Becky had not only won a trip, uh, a President's Club trip, we also the same day or the same time we got there in the hotel room paid off that last debt. So we did it, guys. We did it. And some of you may know that already, but I just want to show you, share with you the process how we did it. And it's the four Ds. Dedicate, donate, develop and just do it and keep track of it. Keep it in front of you. So as I wind down, it's been an encouragement to share this over the years with so many other people. And uh, there was a lot of no's. There was a lot of skimping here and there. But overall, man, we did not have to change everything. We did not have to eat ramen noodles. We did not have to eat hungry man, uh, uh, you know, those dinners, uh, TV dinners and stuff like that, like I used to eat as a kid. Uh, but you may have to. How big is the goal? How big is your why? And uh, what are you looking to do afterwards? Like I said earlier, I love to teach people about how to know, uh, live, and love the purpose for their career and their finances. And for us, it's about serving people. Are we perfect at it? Absolutely not. But what we found was the home was keeping us back from doing some things we believe that we we're intended to do, that we we're purposed to do. And uh, I just want to encourage you, no matter where you're living, no matter what size home you have, no matter how big or small your mortgage is, um, you can pay this sucker off. You can make it that asset that it's supposed to be and not that, that uh, hindrance that it could be if we let it sit too long. And so again, dedicate, um, donate, develop, and do it. And I really believe you can do it. So I want to hear from you. In the comments there or in an email, you can email me at brian, B-R-I-A-N, at Brian Horvath, H-O-R-V-A-T-H. So that's Brian at Brian Horvath, Horvath.com. Or leave a comment and just tell me, hey, uh, we've already done this and it's amazing and we, we're excited that you have too. And hey, we want to team up to help more people. Or you know, hey, we want to ditch the debt. Thank you so much and uh, whatnot. Or man, maybe you want to tell me what's holding you back. What are some of those limiting beliefs you have right now? What are some fears? Uh, what do you need to get over the hump? You know, what do you need to, to finally break through that barrier? Um, kind of like that four minute mile. You know, what do you need to really make it happen this year? It's 2020. What's your, what's your 2020 vision? Or do you have a vision that's for 2020? Whatever it may be. Or maybe you just think I'm straight up nuts. Like, why would I pay off my home? It's a tax benefit. Or I do something else with my money instead of paying off my home. Or I'm only going to be here X amount of years. Or I understand a lot of these things. And granted, it depends on what your value system is or what your goals are and what your plans are. But if you're really about really getting out of debt or even, like I said, any goal of a major cash uh, amount or your first goal you've ever done financially, these are some great steps. Dedicate, donate, develop, and do it create a chart, make it happen. And uh, I'd love to help you do that. So write a comment, send an email, um, tell me I'm nuts <laughs> or tell me, you know, ask some questions, shoot some holes in this idea, some things I said, I want to hear from you. And if you're really about getting it done this year, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of sitting on your hands or not really understanding how to get on a plan, if you're like me and you need a plan, because for me, it wasn't about what kind of money I made. It was, I didn't feel like I had a plan or I got overwhelmed. If that's you, I got a course coming up. I'm going to start at the end of the month. It's a masterclass called seven ways in seven days to change your financial future forever. And if you go to brianhorvath.com slash seven ways slash or hyphen seven days, you can sign up to find out when that's going to be released to you. And I'd love to see you uh, on the course with me. So again, fire off your information. Glad to be with you on Facebook live and I'm excited about what's going to happen next for you this year. Have a great night.